So, last but not least, some good news. Uh, <laughs> more good news. Yay! More good news. Because if the Switch isn't going to be so powerful, like it's every third-party thing on the planet, this blah, 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 blah. Well, it better be offering some virtual console stuff, right? Yeah. Maybe some That'd stuff we've nice. never gotten before. That'd be... Whoa, wait, what? GameCube virtual console support has finally been talked about. Not oh, confirmed. Oh, boy. Talked about. But it's talked about. <laughs> oh, okay. oh gosh, yeah. It's been yeah. talked about for Wii U, too, so... Kind of holding our breath since you know maybe it didn't happen on Wii U because of sales, or maybe they just it was never going to happen. I don't know. Um, so Koizumi from Nintendo, one of the primary guys there, does that does a lot of stuff. Um, he says they are working on some things along those lines when asked about including GameCube virtual console support. <laughs> Can you be any more cryptic than that? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um, along those lines yeah yes. so to me this sounds like gamecube virtual console games they're gonna happen it's very weird because the switch does not have have uh analog triggers yeah and there are yeah. some games on gamecube that require analog triggers mm-hmm. um, but again they've also talked about uh later on in a different interview they talked about making um joy cons that are basically gamecubes yeah. So those would yeah. have analog. Right. But they said it also makes the system really bulky, and they kind of joked about it. It's not something right. they're actually doing, and but that did lead increase to the fact that eh. maybe there will be more different types of joy cons. Right. And at the same point in time, though, too, it's not like buttons can't be remapped. So, I mean, there is that possibility. There is nothing you can remap about analog triggers. Analog triggers are pressure sensitive. Nah. Okay. That's that's the big deal. Why why some people are upset about digital. Um, because for racing games, you need that pressure for your brakes, right? And your yep. acceleration, your deacceleration. Yep. So, like, it's primarily racing games, but it affects fighting games. It affects a lot of different kinds of games that that you can take advantage okay. of that. Yeah. So, remapping all you want doesn't change the fact that literally there's not a single button that has this functionality. Right. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, and now Nintendo would be the only current gen con- current gen. Are they a new generation current gen? I don't know. Yeah. 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 Anyways, yeah. they'll be the only one currently being sold on the market uh, from the major three platform holders that does not. Have analog, uh, so yep. Um, Take that what you want. So that uh, mostly right now, because we, we don't know how that affects things in the future. Um, we know that that does affect GameCube. So I wonder if they're saying working on some things along those lines means they're going to bring some version of console games over. No, no, I, I'm I'm thinking I got a whole another idea on this. What do you got? I, I think they're working on this thing called Game Box, not GameCube. It, it's very, very, very similar to GameCube. But, you know, that's why it's along the lines of. Oh, my God. <laughs> Complete hoping, sarcasm here, by the way. Because here's the thing. Nintendo hasn't talked about Virtual Console in this system at all. They said it's something we'll discuss in the future. Um, which tells you it's probably not there at launch, because we're a couple weeks from launch. It's not even being talked about. Yeah. Chances are Virtual Console is not going to be talked about until their online service goes up at the end of the year. Yep. Um, or summer when they launch the app. You know, at some point later this year, they'll, they'll talk about Virtual Console. One thing I saw uh, someone do, this guy, um, Josh is his name, from BitBlock, the BitBlock or whatever on YouTube, uh, he put up a mock concept of basically a Netflix-like service for Virtual Console. Interesting. That I think it would be extremely interesting if Nintendo decided to go that route. And maybe that's why they're not talking about it, because they're still developing this Netflix-like virtual... Like what he says... Uh, something along those lines. As in, it's not going to be like traditional virtual console. Virtual console yeah. It'll be a subscription service, mm-hmm. 15 bucks a month like Netflix or whatever, and then you gain access to the entire virtual console library. I would actually be okay with that, I think, surprisingly. I think a lot of people would be okay with that. I mean, yeah. It's and, an extra, and, and extra They, they month, have to but... consistently update it, but so does Netflix. So yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, definitely. And they have enough in their library, they could keep that going for a long time. And, oh, yeah. And then on top of that, they could... Because this is something I talked about them doing um, if their online, their base online thing was really expensive. Now, it's not going to be included for $2. Right. And no. they've already confirmed at least the games that have the online features you can purchase after that one month free is up. So, like, okay. we know there's some sort of individual purchasing, but I'm wondering if that's kind of an aside because those are bonus features. Yeah. And... The base games, you, you can still get through a Netflix-like service. Now, again, this is speculation and dreaming because we don't know. Nintendo's not right. talking about it. Yeah. But I really wish that that's the direction they would go here with this. 
is take your GameCube VC, take everything, throw it on a Netflix-like service, mm-hmm. um, and you're going to make more money over time doing this. And yep. the thing is, as you go along, once you finally run out of retro games, which I don't know how you can because you can start talking to third parties and get oh, yeah, stuff. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. I don't know. When they would be a long time before they run out of retro games. But once they hit that point that they run out of retro games, guess what? Now you can start talking about bringing 3DS games over there, somehow reworking those yep. to work yeah. on the thing. DS games. Yep. There, there's a whole lot of directions you can go to keep it going. And then finally, if for some reason, every single game that's ever released on your old platforms has come out. Then you start looking at, well, we released Breath of the Wild at launch. It's been six years. I'm going to throw that on the service. Yeah. Make that part of the service now. Everyone can play Breath of the Wild. Yeah. You can still charge for that DLC. Yeah. Well, yeah. Definitely, they won't. Include, I guarantee oh, they won't yeah. include the no. DLC. They'll or maybe, or maybe they, or maybe they throw the DLC on instead of the, yeah, the whatever. Game. Yeah. Um. So it, it's one of those which I thought would be so weird because because by then everyone who's bought Breath of the Wild that wants to play the DLC has the DLC. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, I suppose. Yeah. But I don't know. Again, this is this is a pipe dreaming, but um, I don't know. Do, do you want to see a Netflix like service? I wouldn't have a problem with that at all. Uh, I'd love to see something. Free, but <laughs> who, won? who won? But I understand. Show? I understand the fact that you know, it, I'm okay with actually paying a subscription, sure, a month if I have to, to well, like, access now that we, now that access know, a, a now that we know the online decent cheap, library. So it's like it's not like we're paying 15 bucks for the online service and then an extra 15, 15 so now 30. Yeah. We're looking yeah. at again. I kind of mentioned this before. 12, 20 bucks a month, 15, maybe yeah, total. Yeah. And it's like you told me before that's too expensive, and now here we are. Oh, but, 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 but here's the thing. Here's what makes it more acceptable. Even if it ends up being, say, it's five dollars a month for the online service, fifteen for a Netflix service. And so you're hitting that twenty dollar mark that I mentioned in a previous podcast. That you're like, oh, don't do that. Right. Here's the thing. You don't have to spend twenty bucks a month to gain access to the online features. Right. That's the big deal. Yep. It's if you want. And there's also virtual console. Apps. There's also the fact that. You have an access to a library of games, yes. not to just one or two. Yeah, where that if when we were talking about the twenty bucks earlier, we were talking about maybe one or two games. This is we're talking a library yeah. now, so that makes it a heck of a lot so, more acceptable. Yeah. So I, again, that's what I hope happens. Ever since I saw that video that he made, I'm like, that's really slick. Yeah. It's all managed in the cloud, by the way, which makes this even easier for Nintendo if they did it that way. The, the way that he presented it, because. Then you're not even running it locally on your system, and most of these old games could easily run in the cloud. Oh, yeah. Um, so, that brings us back to the GameCube Virtual Console. So, it's something they've talked about, something they promised. They've remastered some GameCube games. Yep. A.K.A. Twilight Princess, The Wind Waker. Um, <laughs> basically, Zelda, since that's like the only thing they are all... Apparently, Nintendo has a memo. We can only HD Zelda games. Yeah. Hey, we uh, can't do an HD... Mario Galaxy. We can't do an HD Super Mario 64. Just isn't something we can do. It has to be Zelda. Why? Only Zelda get remakes. Why? Um, that's not true because technically, technically on DS, Mario 64 got remade. Oh yeah, Mario yeah. 64 DS. But um, for the most part, it seems like they'll just remake Zelda games and nothing else. And the thing is, the Zelda games sell, but so would other no, remakes. So. Right? Yeah, I'm sure Mario 64 would sell fairly well. So I look at that and I say. Something along those lines means, yes, some games are going to be virtual console releases. Some are going to be remakes. Yep. That's realistically what I see. Um, because they've already proven that they will remaster GameCube games in HD. So, yeah. And now you start thinking, GameCube vir- virtual console, they're finally starting to at least talk about it. Whether or not anything happens, we don't know because they've cryptically talked about GameCube Virtual Console <laughs> more than never happened. That's why I said Game Box. Start, but now you guys still look at it. Well, the Wii's not much more powerful, and you have motion controls. Yeah. Yeah. Or are they? Or are is, is this what they're going to do? They're going to do GameCube Virtual Console games for the games that don't need the analog trigger, and then they're going to do Wii Virtual Console, except it's not going to be Wii Virtual Console. It's just going to be we're doing everything in HD, and you pay 20 bucks a pop for each game. To get an HD. Yeah. It's, what do you uh, mean? They just did Twilight Princess sixty freaking dollars. Ugh. Ten years after it came out. Yeah. No thanks. That's what they do though. Yeah. Like if they finally give us HD Mario Galaxy, it's gonna be sixty bucks. Uh, I know. That just 
Yeah. And people are going to pay it. I know they are. That's the sad part. It's like, I paid it for Zelda, and I would pay it again. Yeah, I know. But, like, that's because it's worth it to me. In so much, like, I don't want to say, like, it's worth the 60 bucks, but it it was. You gained features on the gamepad. You gained a quick sale in the Wind Waker HD that made that game infinitely better, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, They even changed up some of the Triforce quests to make it a little better. Uh, Like, the subtle changes they did, in addition to making an HD or worth it to me, plus... Dude, some of my favorite games in HD. Yeah, no, I know. Like, I mean, I get it. But... Like, I'd almost say if Secret Mana was in HD, I'd pay 60, but no, I wouldn't. Because yeah. Secret Mana, oh, you're just going to up, up the resolution. It's going to look exactly the same. It's not like the yeah. Wind Waker that had a noticeable improvement, in my opinion. Or Twilight Princess that maybe didn't have such a, such a big improvement, but, like, the textures were very noticeable. Like, the game didn't look like it aged as bad. Yeah. Um, which was worth it to me to spend money on. Plus, you got an Amiibo. It was really nice. They bought, they bought a little okay, with it. yeah, that um, that's a little bit more acceptable then. But, but to yeah. me, to, to release a game that's how many years old? Yes, it's updated to be HD. Well, it's here's it. What, what do you want them to do with GameCube games? Virtual console is. I mean, what we've been talking about that. That's all you want. Yeah, that's all I need. I mean, that that would be amazing. So on my 4K TV, if that thing ever works again. <laughs> but fun fact, my. Fifteen hundred dollar four K TV's busted, and <sighs> Samsung refuses to fix it. Yeah, so thanks now, Samsung. So now I gotta I gotta wait for my stuff to kick in with the retailer I bought it from, which is after the one year warranty. Anyways, long story short, it doesn't work, and I'm not happy. Um, but if it was working, you're okay playing in crappy four three four eighty p on a four K screen. No, when the alternative is they can at least make a ten eighty. Granted, but you know, yeah. gonna, you know what they're going to do. You know yeah. it's going to be 60 oh, bucks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's... I mean, if it's a Netflix service, it's all mute anyways. But right. yeah. assuming yeah. that they're going to still sell games individually, which they might because they made good money doing it. Yep. So you just want them all on VC? Yeah, it wouldn't bother me. Because I'm, I'm used to that being those graphics anyways. Here's, so. what, here's what I'd like to see them do. Is... Not only they've proven that upgrading some of GameCube games to HD isn't necessarily a long process, I would like them to release every GameCube game that their controllers can possibly support properly on Virtual Console. I mean, they're not going to release them all at once, but, you know, oh, right, right. as they yep, trickle them yep. up. And then offer, say, a $20 HD texture pack per game that you could optionally do that upgrades the game to 1080 resolution. Yeah. With, with the new textures. Yeah. Um, something I've talked about them doing before. They still haven't done it. They're, they're still able to make more money, I think, uh, releasing at retail for 60 bucks a pop. But I think they might not do that because they're. I think they're going to end up remastering. Re, remastering. More like repackaging. But uh, most of the Wii U library, since the sales were so slow or so bad on it, so they're not going to need to remaster GameCube games. So I, I feel like they could just make extra money by having a group of people that all they do is sit back and put it in 1080 and retexture the game and just keep releasing texture packs. Yep. Um, and make extra money that way. So like, oh, you could just buy the normal, say the normal game you gave for 10 bucks, but if you want it in HD, you can pay an extra 20. And they'd be like, oh, but they're holding it back. I'm like, not really, because the alternative is they release it at retail for 60. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That... No, I mean like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. It's going to cost 60 game came out like two or three years ago. Let's be 60 bucks. No, great. It comes with extra stuff. Yeah, I was going to say, that does, but it did add extra still features. still a vast majority of the game. No, I, I get that. Is the um, game. Right, and that's where my point would be. You know, on that one, it's more acceptable because there is actually, to me, it's there's actually new features and, and quite a bit of new features. Battle mode, basically, plus yeah. a couple characters. Yeah, but that one, it, it does feel kind of, in a way, like a new game. Where it's not just remastered, re up. It basically upscaled graphics and then we're well, going to sell feels, that. For... I think it feels new for you because you didn't own a Wii U. Well, there's that too. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be like, uh-huh. it really looks exactly like what I was playing this whole time. Yeah. Um, yeah. With Splatoon characters and a new battle mode, which, by the way, that also just goes to show how awesome new battle mode is. Um, oh, and it has the ability to hold two items. I don't know if they're including that in the main race tracks or not because we've only seen people playing the battle mode. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd be okay more with 
like if they came out with the old games like that for like forty. You know, it, it where it's not like it's you know it's not no, a brand no, it's like not a brand I know I, I realize that, but you know what I'm saying? It's not a brand new game. It, yeah. It's it's something from the past. It's something that's old. That all you did was slightly <laughs> up the graphics. Whoopty freaking new. Okay, so what? I mean, you're going from 480 to 1080. That's not a slight. Okay, fine. Okay, that's fine. like going from your 3DS to us watching the Bucks game. Upstairs. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, it's a pretty yeah, big upgrade, but <laughs> pretty significant. We're talking about here, like a game like Mario Galaxy, where you feel like would be easier to do that with. But there's certain games that aren't so easy to do that with. Oh yeah, no, I know. Um, because the art style, like Twilight Princess, requires a lot more texturing. Yeah, I don't know. Just to me, it seems more like a a forty dollar area, just because it's sure. not a no, not yeah, a brand new game. Yeah, I get that. I get that. There's a lot of people that felt Twilight Princess and The Wind Waker should have been forty dollar games because they're not new games. Yeah, they have some new features, but they're they're not new games. Yeah. Um, there's people that feel that way about Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. It's not a new game. Yeah, there's new that. features. Yeah. But it's not a new game. Yeah. Um, the only thing that you could argue, this is the only argument that I feel Mario Kart 8 has for the sixty dollar price point. It's not the new modes and the new characters. That was going to happen either either way. They they've proven they do that when they remaster games. Yep. It's the fact that it includes all the DLC. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's yep. what to me makes it yep. be like. Because on Wii U, if you go out and buy Mario Kart 8 right now, it might still even cost 60 Well, I think you can get it for 48 or something on Amazon. But you're still going to have to spend 12 20 bucks extra to get all the DLC. Yep. So, so there you like, go. that's, I think, where the value is. Where it's like, hey, you could look at it as it's a, it really is releasing a 40 but 20 extra for the DLC plus the right. modes. Yep. Um, yep. So it, and that's that, to me, is acceptable. So Mario Kart 8 Deluxe might have an exception because it was one of Nintendo's first foray into DLC and it includes it all. Yeah. Um, but... I don't know, man. GameCube Virtual Console. I really want... This is really tough for me because... Obviously, I want to. I just want to be able to play all the games. Yeah. I mean, That's, literally every game, yeah. game, I just want to be able to play it. And I realize that the Pro Controller, the, the stuff, they don't support analog. Maybe there'll be a release with Virtual Console games. Like, you can buy a specific analog controller if you really want. Yep. But it, it's... I'm really torn. Really, really torn. Because the GameCube uh, marked the, the, the thing that started the Wii era. And there's so many fantastic games on there. Oh, definitely. But it's like, I I guess I'm in kind of an HD whore. <laughs> I am a Nintendo gamer. I've been playing HD on stuff. Now I've seen Nintendo games in HD. I don't want to go back. Yeah. Now, if we're talking 2D, top-down stuff. I'm fine with that not being HD. Like SNES, NES. Oh, yeah. No, no, that needs to be HD. Yeah. I'm okay with that. But we're talking 3D video games. I've seen better now. Yeah. I want better. I want Luigi's Mansion in HD. Period. Yeah. yeah. But again. I want Super Smash Bros. Melee in HD. Yeah. Period. Like, yeah. I want these GameCube games in HD. Rogue Squadron on the GameCube. I want that in HD. Mm-hmm. Granted, not a Nintendo game, but whatever. Yeah. I want that stuff in HD. I just know it's going to be expensive as heck if they do it. Yeah. So it's like, I, I guess all I should be asking is just give me a way to play it, what, whether it's in HD, whether it's not. Okay. But I'm just like, I'm a little selfish. It, I'm sorry, guys. I don't even have the money to do it, to pay it for these games. Yeah, right. I just want to know they exist. So yeah. maybe someday before I die, I'll go back and finally buy them for the Switch. Yeah, right. <laughs> even though even though it's the, like the 10 generations left and, and if it's all virtual the shop won't even be up anymore yeah yeah Ugh. i don't know i'm i'm, the, I'm just so torn because re- reality is i should just hope for a way any way to play it whether yeah. it's the old games yep. or hd god i'm so selfish yeah i mean to me i think it's more of a i'm used to seeing it in the quote-unquote crappy graphics that to me it's fine i guess that's just me though yeah you might feel like do you like super mario galaxy yeah oh yeah okay are you gonna want to go back to those graphics after you play odyssey i don't know i haven't played odyssey yet so that's what i'm saying the little bit you've seen of odyssey looks fantastic yeah it does it doesn't look that different from in my opinion from mario galaxy graphics it's just yeah, no. different settings yeah outside of the, the city that right everyone, yeah everyone that's knows, everyone knows the city felt out of place yeah. whatever yep um so it's kind of like 
once you experience something better, it's like I don't want to go back. Like the Wind Waker in HD, I've experienced it now. I even even the old school Wind Waker game in HD, like on emulators, doesn't feel as good to me. And like yeah. here's the thing, I've seen a lot of these games with their same textures in HD on emulators, and it's like, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. And it, can you just yeah. emulate like that in HD? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. Anyways. Yeah. They don't do it because like at, at this point. <laughs> They're not really telling us we're going to get GameCube Virtual Console. It's just, well, what, what were the exact words again? The uh, Along those lines. Yeah. They're doing something along those lines. We are working on some things along those lines. Some things okay. along those lines. Yeah. Yeah. Nintendo, it's time for a Direct. <laughs> yep. We need a Nintendo Direct. We need you to clearly outline the future of Virtual Console. Clearly outline the future of a lot of things. Um, all these features we just got in this document leak that are standard. How about you let the public know? Mm-hmm. You're right. Let them know it's a universal account system. Yep. Because you're not talking about it. Nope. These are things that people care about that are buying the system day one. Yep. Um, obviously, we are people in the know, so we write the leak, we know. But there's a lot of consumers that don't watch this podcast. Don't. Let, we'll go to all the various Nintendo sites. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. That, I guess that's going to do it for this week. Yep. Uh, sorry that it really felt like a downer week. Yeah, right. Kind of did. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? As we get closer to release, we're going to have a lot. Uh, and somehow we went an entire podcast, maybe for the first time in a long time, in like months, without talking about Breath of the Wild. Well, uh, we just did. <laughs> I just brought it up. <laughs> but, but I purposely wanted to kind of keep Breath of the Wild topics out here. There was some, yeah. some trickling news out there, but nothing big. No, nothing yeah. worth talking about that we haven't really discussed. Uh, so... I, I'm kind of going to leave Breath of the Wild conversation alone unless we somehow get some massive big news. Uh, because I'm, I, I kind of want to save everything, any any thoughts or opinions, until we play. Okay. Um, and we're going to be live streaming. Uh, I, for sure, will be live streaming. I can't say exactly at midnight because I'm have to go. i picking it up at midnight. So probably around 1 to 2 a.m. that night, night of it release, I will be live streaming uh, Central. Uh, he won't be because he's got to go home to sleep, get, get, go to work. Uh, but I'm sure he'll come back the, the following weekend. And I don't know how long I'll be live streaming for that day till I pass out. Um, <laughs> so an hour and a or half. Or until I have to really take care of my kids. Which means, if I think, well, until I take care of my kids, that's at 6.30 in the morning. So you might get four or five hours out of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so we'll we'll get a more concrete live stream schedule once I clear it with my girlfriend, which is the number one person i got to clear it with. Yeah. Um, and then I clear it with him when he's going to be available because... What I want to do, as I said earlier with the live stream, is make sure that both of us stream. Um, it's going to be through the same setup, so we're not going to have two streams going at once. Like, I can set it up so we have two of us going at once, but I'm not going to because uh, this is our first time through. We're not racing. Yeah. Um, I don't want to, you know, I, I want players to see this is how I approach the game, now here's how you're approaching the game. And so they see the variety in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, heck, maybe they're playing Breath of the Wild along with us. Who knows? Maybe. Um, but, yeah. And it's going to be weird because I'm going to end up... I already know, guys, I'm going backside. Yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because once you get to a certain point where you get the, the glider, you can go anywhere you want off the plateau. I'm going backside because we haven't seen anything backside. Yep. They keep going forward. I'm like, no, no, no. I know there's this uh, over there. I've seen a couple of the shrines. Yeah, there's the castle. No, I'm not going to be one of those guys going straight for the boss right away. I'm going off the backside and seeing what the hell is back there. And if I die, because I end up in the middle of the ocean, well... I die. <laughs> <laughs> Just another, well, the thing is we another know, death we know, to add to the video. According to the map, we know there's land back there. So I don't know what yeah. it is, but yeah. uh, I want to go find out. And I don't know. You, know. you probably haven't even thought about what direction you go. You're right no. on the side. So you're going to go whatever's convenient, I'm sure. Oh, I just got the glider. Well, I'm going down over here. Yep. And I'm going to be like, nope, I'm purposely climbing up those dang mountains in the back so I can glide down to the backside and figure out what's going on. <laughs> yep. Um, anyways. That's going to do it for the 17th episode of the Nintendo Prime Podcast. As always, I am your host, Nathaniel Ruffle-Jantz. This is my good buddy, Eric Moore. And we will catch you guys next week. See you later. Switching it up.